Next, let's talk about Class Charlie airspace or Class C airspace. So Class Charlie airspace is going to be also around major metropolitan areas, maybe areas that aren't quite as big as places like New York, LA, Miami, etc. There's still some larger cities that may have additional air traffic coming from, you know, maybe some of the regional airliners. There could be some major airline flights coming in there, um, heavy flight training, things like this. There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, air traffic that there needs to be some additional air traffic control services, okay? And so Class Charlie airspace is like an upside down wedding cake, just like Class Bravo, but there's generally speaking only going to be one shelf above the surface layer that goes down to the surface, okay? So Class Charlie airspace, you will need air traffic authorization to be able to fly your drone into, into Class Charlie airspace. So let's go over to Sky Vector so I can show you how to identify Class Charlie airspace and some of the different things you'll want to know about that type of airspace. So here I've brought up Sky Vector for Green Bay Class Charlie airspace. So what you'll need to know for Class Charlie airspace is that it is identified by a solid magenta line on the charts. So when we were looking at the Chicago airspace before, we saw that the Class Bravo airspace is identified in a in a blue solid line, okay? Class Charlie is a solid magenta line, all right? So this first circle right here is the, the circle that extends down to the surface. So again, we look at this number at the bottom and then the number at the top to tell us what is the bottom threshold for that particular layer and then what is the top for that particular layer, all right? So this sort of ring here in the Class Charlie airspace extends from the surface, so from the surface of the ground all the way up to 4,700 feet MSL. So remember, anything that is used in an airplane while somebody is flying is generally going to be charted in MSL or mean sea level. Class Charlie airspace generally extends from the surface up to 4,000 feet AGL, that may be a question on the exam. Pay very much attention to whether or not the question is asking for AGL or MSL, okay? MSL is going to be what you see here on the chart. And then just know, though, that generally speaking, that layer extends up 4,000 feet AGL, okay? And that simply, the reason for this 4,700 is simply because the on the ground at Green Bay is about 700 feet or so. Yeah, it looks right here, six, 695 feet. And um, so 4,000 feet above that is gonna be 4,700 feet. This next layer here is the second ring on our wedding cake. It extends from 1,900 feet MSL to 4,700 feet MSL. So the top is the same for both layers, but the bottom is 1,900 feet. So you could be flying over Seymour at 1,500 feet. I'm sorry, let, well, for your drone, you're not going to be flying at 1,500 feet. You're going to be flying at the surface to, you know, uh, uh, 400 feet AGL. So if this airport is at 700 feet, you would be flying up to 1,100 feet MSL, okay? So you could fly your drone here um, between the ground, the surface, and up to 400 feet AGL, right over here, say over Seymour, and you would not be in the Class Charlie airspace, okay? But do know that you do need to have air traffic authorization to fly in Class Charlie airspace. And you may also see questions when we're talking about ra uh, radio techniques, strategies. You may get some questions on what this uh, is right here. So you need to know that for Class Charlie airspace, there is an approach control and then there's your tower. Um, and so with class Charlie airspace, right here what this is saying is to contact Green Bay approach within 20 nautical miles and then it gives you the frequency that you can contact Green Bay approach control on. Some airports, and it doesn't look like Green Bay does, um, maybe Madison does. Some airports, they do have, uh, yes, Madison does. They do have on, depending on which side of the airport you're approaching from, it'll give you a different frequency. So if you're on the 
east side of Madison and coming in to Madison, they want you to contact Madison Approach within 20 nautical miles on 120.1. But then if you're coming in from the west side and you're flying east eastbound into Madison, on this side, they want you to contact Madison Approach within 20 nautical miles on 135.45. And the reason for that is just is just separation of services that you know, they've got a lot of traffic coming in and out. So they're separating out the approach control. So some class Charlie airports will have two separate approach controls. Um, whereas you saw with Green Bay, there was there was just the one. Uh, so you may get a question on that, but understand that that Charlie's class Charlie airspace has approach control, and then they also have the tower that um, that pilots also need to talk to when they're when they're flying in in a manned aircraft. So that is class Charlie airspace. Uh, how you identify it on the VFR sectional charts and some of the little nuances about them that you may get questions on on your exam.